Ah, London. What a town. History around every corner, and a tourist photographing it. Pub serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theatre and art. And multiculturalism. And the world's oldest underground, the Tube. The class of cities, really. Top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up, and one night to tear it all down. Our status. Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends. That hurt you more than it hurt me. Do us a favor and keep it quiet, Dalton. If they don't shoot me, I won't shoot them. How's that?
What? Do... <laughs> Make. Their profiles are heavily encrypted. No identifying information. Uh, ghosts in this system. Piece of idiot. Got loads of dead set gear down here. Now, why do you suppose that is? What? How did they get their hands on it? I don't know. But someone wants to make it look like dead set was here. Shit. You need to proceed with extreme caution, Dalton. 
Who are these men in black anyway? Nothing identifying. I suspect that's by design. The entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Badly is that? RDX nitrogen. Enough to level Parliament. Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits the bill. On my way. Bagley, is that not the detonator? No, but it's a transmitter sending a signal to a device on the floor above us. Safe to assume that would be the detonator we're looking for. are going to blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first. Found the detonator. And it's definitely live. Bagley, I'm gonna need some help with this. Yes, you are, but sadly, I'm locked out. Fuck. We don't have a chance without Bagley. Wait, I might know a workaround. We trained your manual overrides at MI5. You're full of surprises. Be quick about it. All right, Bagley, do your thing. I'm in. And the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. For fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? Of course I can. But I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize you. So, fair warning. I expect this to draw some attention your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counting on you. Company at our back door. Shit. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. Let's have a look around. Fire! 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 Fire!
Bagley, update. Let's just say I'm both impressed and annoyed by how sophisticated the Daggy Tampa security is. Still working. Have to reload. Uh. Tell me you're close. I'm through security, now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. I need your physical appendages now. What's wrong? There are three slots on... Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. A protocol is to wipe everything, including badly. I need him for the transmitter. I know, but if they get him, they get everything. Names, ops, locations. Okay, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay, Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, if this goes... Y it won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. Look.
Yeah, they were there. Last I saw. That's taking fire! I'm on my own! I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DeadSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DeadSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up dead sick and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sick ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think it everything.
glad to see you're alive. If you're still committed to the cause, DedSec needs you. I'll send you the coordinates to our last safe house. Meet me there. Fine. CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then San Francisco in 2017 before coming here to London. And every time it's been rolled out, it's been pretty much an unmitigated disaster. For those of you who are listening who are lucky enough not to be here in London's chaotic scenes, it's worth remembering that the Telecoms Tower is now owned by Blue. The tower looms over northwest London. It's always been a communications hub, acting as part of the UK's television and communications network. Although there's been some secrecy around its use, and now that Blue owns it, it's only a security. Yeah, now everything that's part of Bloom's city surveillance operation is run through the telecom tower. And I have to say, 
say, it looks completely ridiculous. It's got that silly crown thing at the top and all the blue light. What's that even about? What does it do? I don't see that there's any purpose to that at all. It's a blight on the skyline, if you ask me, and it's become the main point of control for millions of people. The system network and Bagley are both operated in schools there too. And don't forget about the self-driving cars too. I always thought they were just running on their own. No, CTOS is the big control system behind the cars. There was a book back in the earliest days of self-driving car technology that they operated by themselves. They used to use a series of sensors to see the world around them. Radar, for instance, would look far off into the distance, while LiDAR would detect objects nearby. And while these cars still use uh, some of this technology, with CTOS and its detailed maps and data that it has on London really makes people be able to take control of it. And CTOS can take control of your car if you're part incorrectly, it's no surprise that it was made mandatory to have a self-driving car. The system is so bad, but it's so annoying. Whenever I try to use one of the shareable self-driving cars, I always find myself stuck in traffic jams or roadblocks. I've heard so many stories of cars shunting into the back of the house. I think it's just the human drivers sometimes. The technology was suspect to make suspects, but the was made was so bad that it just makes All like units, even more chaotic than it suspects. was before. I'm giving up on the car. I'm only using the bikes which are self-driving at the moment at least. And don't even get me started on the data. Everything that blew Scenes from your movements around the city and the city of driving cars is danger and feeds big and critical big condition. Control Please system. exit immediately. Oh, and danger. Danger. Oh, oh, Negative. Not as no visual of the suspect. Car. Suspect We're talking about the optic and how it's changed our lives. Now, as you remember, we announced a new version of the optic at the recent Tone Conference, but we haven't heard too much about that since due to the dramatic events there. Let's cast our minds back and consider the technology. I mean, the optic changed everything. It lets you see things in AR. You no longer need a smartphone. You just have a small input that sends signals to your optic nerve and lets you see your emails, take calls, and browse the internet directly as if the screen is in front of your eyes. Instead of having to carry around a phone, you just got the small handheld unit. Control. So much lighter and so much more convenient. It's great. Vicky, you sound like you absolutely love the optic. Do you actually think that it's made our lives any better? Can anyone I'm see the sure. suspect? It's definitely made things a lot easier. It's so simple to call someone now. All you have to do is choose who you want to talk to, and they're there, ready to talk. And browsing the web is so much easier. I remember Control. when you used to have to sit down at a computer NW. with an actual keyboard here. and mouse and type everything out. And my favourite feature is public transport. With the object, you can just walk straight onto the tube. It even acts as a passport. No longer do I have to dig around and try and find my old paper passport just to travel somewhere. Also, I thought that Optic's marketing strategy, making it free for people, was a stroke of genius. Genius. Bloom was really calculated when it was doing that. It was pushing this draconian device on us at all. Sure, everybody flocked to it. There was free Wi-Fi and phone plans. That definitely helped, but it wasn't a case of this is a product that you need in your life. Why do you hate it so much? It's just the worst because you had to give up your privacy expectations and accept surveillance. It was almost like the government and Bloom didn't even need to make the optic mandatory. Making it mandatory was only to get the last holdouts across the line. If free data didn't convince you, fines and arrests from the